Hello everyone and welcome to this video series about the Python package TurboLucid. In this first video we're going to talk about what TurboLucid is and why you might want to use it. And we're also going to go through with the installation procedure. So to start with, you see that I have actually Paraview fired up here. And I'm sort of going to use Paraview in order to contrast uh, its features to what TurboLucid has to offer because both of them are for visualization, but uh, very different types of visualization. So I guess most of you know what Paraview is. It's an excellent software for visualizing 3D data sets, just looking at them, inspecting them, uh, trying to figure out what your data says. Now, usually when you have a 3D data set at some point, you start looking at its specific parts, which may be either 2D, like a slice I have right here, or maybe even 1D, if you take, for instance, a profile along the line. Now let's imagine a hypothetical situation that I took out the slice and I'm like, yeah, this is the thing. This is the amazing, the amazing result that I've been waiting for. And I basically just wanna get the slice and save it into a very nice figure and make the figure look excellent so that I can actually put it in my publication or my presentation for my client or for my conference, depending on uh, what you work with. So what are my options here? So obviously I, I see the data and it looks nice. And then there's still quite a bit I can customize, right? I can customize the color map, I can customize, well, the fonts of different elements. Uh, I'm not sure if I, yeah, I think I can customize how many data points I have along, uh, how many ticks I have along the axis. So quite a bit of things, but it quickly becomes quite limited. Now imagine if I would, for example, want to add a 1D profile onto this 2D picture. Like for instance, I'm really interested in what is happening at precisely this point. Can I add the profile of this field above the 2D data? Uh, maybe you can, I'm actually not sure, but it's at least very non-trivial. Um, also, for example, imagine I want to divide the values you have along uh, the X and Y axis by some characteristic length. For instance, uh, uh, the size of, uh, of the water depth, which I have at the inlet here. So that I think is also not really possible. So you quickly run into a limit of what you can actually customize uh, as far as details about the plot go in Paraview. So one alternative to fixing it is just saving the screenshot with just the data and then fixing all the rest of the stuff somewhere else, for instance, uh, like an Inkscape or something like that. But uh, that is quite difficult to automate and it's generally just a pain to do things manually. Uh, so it's really not nice. Now, if we look at the other end of the spectrum, uh, in Python, we have a very nice visualization ecosystem, which focuses on really, really letting you the control of all the elements of the plot, uh, basically as deep as you want to go, you can go with uh, matplotlib, all right? But the problem is that matplotlib is really good at plotting 1D plots, so like scatter plots, line plots, and things like that. And certain types of 2D plots as well, like counter plots. Uh, but generally for the 2D plots, you need to have some sort of structured 2D data. So unlike Paraview, in which you can have all sorts of unstructured data sets, for example, from your CFD simulation, you can have some sort of crazy unstructured grid with arbitrary polyhedral cells and so on and so forth, Paraview will easily eat that up. But uh, to transfer that to MATLAB uh, is non-trivial. And exactly the purpose of TurboLucid is merging uh, the two functionalities. So TurboLucid is a Python package and it adds the support for reading in 2D data, which lives on a potentially completely unstructured VTK grid. 
and offering the interface to uh, well-known matplotlib functions so that you then can customize the plots of your data. I'm going to show some examples now from my own work, just a few pictures so that you get an idea what I'm talking about. Uh, so let's start here. So something like this. It doesn't really matter what the data shows here. Although this is obviously a backward facing step simulation. Uh, so view from the side and from the top. Uh, but you can sort of see what I'm talking about, right? So I, I can really customize the plot. So for instance, this is rendered with LaTeX. Uh, so it matches exactly the font I had in the paper. So all the little things like this that you can sort of expect from uh, matplotlib. But in this case, the data lives on an unstructured data set. Or actually, I don't remember if this is unstructured, but it could be unstructured, that's the point. Uh, two more figures. This is also backward facing step, and here I sort of solve that little thing I started with in the beginning, embedding 1D data, data up, up on, onto the 2D data set. So line profiles of uh, mean velocity at several locations, and here the same for kinetic energy. Finally, a third plot. This is a completely different simulation. This is actually multi-phase. And uh, here it's also 1D profiles on top of a 2D field. And this magenta line is actually um, extracted uh, an isoline. So you can also plot isolines. Uh, we're going to talk about the different types of plots you can do in, in later videos. But uh, here I just want you to sort of get the idea. So th this, is, this is the premise that you can take unstructured data, uh, 2D, and then you can create plots like this. All right. Okay, let's continue with the second part of the video, which is about installing Turbolucid. For that purpose, I created this Ubuntu virtual machine, which is completely fresh, Ubuntu 2020. I uh, only did two things on the machine. The first one is to install Git, which is a version control system, which will allow us to pull stuff from GitHub. And the second thing is that I installed Anaconda, which is a Python distribution, which makes it really easy to install all the prerequisites that we need for Turbolucid. Uh, so that, I would say, is the easiest, uh, uh, the easiest distribution to work with the Python in general. And since this, this is sort of directed towards newbies uh, in Python and installing packages. Uh, I think I'm going to go with that. Uh, so I have a terminal here. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is install VTK. So conda install VTK. And uh, this is basically the reason why using Anaconda is so nice, because installing VTK is generally a bit of a pain. Uh, but uh, here it will take care of it for us really, really easily. So as you can see, it's already done. Uh, let's try to op open Python and let's try to import VTK to see if it works. It works. Amazing. Good. Uh, now we need some more stuff. Let's see. NumPy, matplotlib, scipy, and I think we need pytest if we want to write run the tests, although this is not really strictly necessary. Uh, let's press yes. Let's see, this might take a while. No. So the reason why this is so fast, I guess, is that it already had the all the packages downloaded before because I've been playing around with this a little bit. So probably it will take more time if you really do this from scratch, scratch. Uh, so let's just test real quick. Oops, Python. Let's import numpy. Yeah, excellent. Um, so now we're sort of ready to install Turbolucid because we have all the prerequisites. Uh, so if you just Google Turbolucid GitHub, it will get you to this page, which has a little bit of a readme and uh, so on and so forth. And this is where the code lives. So what we're going to do is copy this line here, then open the terminal. And we're going to clone the repository. So git clone, and then we paste this. So I'm just going to go ahead and clone this to my desktop, which is maybe not the best place to store your software. But this is for demonstration purposes. Excellent. It's done. So now let's go into that directory. And if I write ls, there's a bit of files here, including that readme I talked about. But the important one for us is this setup pi. 
Uh, now here we have several options. Most of you would just want to do the following. Python install, oops, sorry, Python setup py install. Boop, and it's done. Now what this will do is that you have a package installed. So let's let's just try it out. Uh, fire up a Python. Let's see if we can import it. Turbo Lucid. Yep, no problem at all. So that's great. Now there are two alternatives to that. Uh, if we go here, uh, one is to instead write develop here. Now what this will do is that if you change any of the files here, for example, pull and update from Git, that will automatically up, up, update what you have installed. So you don't have to write Python setup by install again. So that that's mostly convenient when you're actually doing some developments. So that's why it's called develop, I guess. But I guess it can be also nice if you're, well, planning on pulling in the updates. Something else one could do uh, is we write git branch and we are on master. What we can do is write git fetch, I think. I'm gonna mess up with git for sure and be embarrassed. Uh, let's see if we can, yeah, now we have all the branches, which was the purpose. And now we can check out develop. Yes, if we write git branch just to check. Uh, so we switch to a different branch of the code, which is develop, which is where basically the state of the art version of the code is. Whereas master is a little bit more conservative. So master only gets updated when I release a new version, which doesn't happen so often at all. So usually when I, you know, introduce new stuff, I actually put it directly on the develop branch. It's not more complicated than that. So the thing is then you can actually get access to those updates immediately. But the caveat is of course, if I introduce something new, which is not really well tested, uh, it might screw screw things up and then you're gonna get that as well. So if you wanna really follow the yeah, bleeding edge of a development, you can switch to the develop branch and then of course you can uh, write the same thing. So Python setup py uh, develop. All right, so just to double check that we have things working, import turbo lucid as DBL works nicely. Let's see if it finds the plot plot field. Yeah, it finds. So yeah, this is it. We got the package installed. So thank you for viewing this video. Uh, in the next video, we're gonna look at opening a data set and doing some basic plotting. Thank you very much for listening.